Hey Cassell, it's Kevin again. I'm here with another video and I'm going to be answering some questions that you had from a while ago. My apologies for not getting a video to you sooner. I've been really busy lately. Uh, Peace Corps has had me doing some projects for them, so that's kind of taken a priority over all the other projects that I've been doing here uh, at site. So I'm sorry, but here is the video uh, and I wanted to just do it as soon as I can uh, for you guys and um, so let's just get into it all right so the first question that was asked um, was did I get to pick where I wanted to go before in Peace Corps history, you were not allowed to pick where you wanted to serve your service at. You, you weren't able to pick a uh, country or anything like that. But things have changed and now Peace Corps realizes that it's actually kind of important for us to pick kind of where we want to go. Um, so now the new process allows us to give three choices um, country-wise where we might want to serve. So. I actually picked number one was the Philippines uh, because I know the Philippines is absolutely gorgeous. Um, my number two was Mongolia and number three was anywhere they wanted to send me. Um, and I was limited on where I could choose from because I, I had only a small selection to pick from because of language requirements and also... Um, uh, departure date so I was only able to pick maybe from like four places unfortunately uh, so those were my picks and they they decided to send me to Mongolia um, they sent me the invitation and said you know what do you want to go to Mongolia I said yes why not um, and now 20 months later I am I've been living in Mongolia so that's that all right the next question that was asked was do I live with the people or do I live in a distance and have to travel to a village or a town? Um, so I actually live in the town uh, of the same people that I work with. Uh, the town is roughly about 400 to 500 people. It's very small. I can see the entire place <laughs> when I look outside. Um, so I live in the village. It's called a Somme. It's... Um, like we have, you know, city, neighborhoods, you know, and things like that in Chicago. Here they have provinces, SOMs, IMAG centers. So it's the same setup as, you know, back home, but just different names. Um, but I live in a, in, a, in, a, in a gated square. It's called a Hasha. And right next to my gear is a house. And... There's a fam Mongolian family that lives there. It's the husband, wife, and three kids. The husband is director of my school, and the wife is a driving teacher at my school. Um, so, yeah, I live with the people here. Um, I in interact with them every day. I hang out with them. I talk to them. Um, it's, I, that's what Peace Corps is. You live with the people. You get immersed, in, immersed into the culture, community, the way of life, um, and that's... That's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the next question was, what type of things do I eat? Um, good question. Uh, it depends on what's available for me. I, I personally do not cook Mongolian food. Um, I'm not that skilled, and I've never tried to make Mongolian food, really. But I eat Mongolian food when it's given to me. So Mongolians love meat. They eat meat with fat on it, which I absolutely hate, um, and can't I, I can't stand it. Uh, a lot of rice, a lot of root vegetables. So that's you know onions, carrots, potatoes, and everything else is really kind of um, imported in from you know China and Russia. So all the veggies, um, but things that I eat and things that I make, a lot of eggs. Uh, a lot of toast. I make spaghetti, um, peanut butter and jellies. I make some stir fry. So chicken I can buy in, in the town that's like 40 minutes away. I go buy it and bring it back. Um, so I mix it up with vegetables, uh, rice, some sauce, things like that. 
Um, so yeah, it's uh, my diet here has really altered since you know from living in the states. Uh, I just wish I was able to get all the food I had back home, but I can't obviously. Um, so I pretty much just have to you know eat what I can to survive. So uh, yeah, it's not too bad though. You get used to it. Okay, the next question was, can you show me, I can't really read the question, it's either it was a fall or fool outfit, I couldn't tell, um, but can you show me my fool or fall outfit? I don't really have an outfit, I, have, I don't have that much clothes, so I pretty much just wear the same stuff kind of over and over. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing a gray kind of... Um, thermo shirt and some jeans this is what I wear pretty much every single day um, and it you know changes depending on the weather um, usually I'll have a lot of layers underneath um, you know up on top and on bottom you know whatever I have to wear to stay warm or if it gets hot outside you know I'll take off the layers um, but I don't have a specific outfit that I wear so which is nice I'm you know, I was only able to bring two bags here, so I was only able to, you know, stuff in as much clothes as possible, so that wasn't much. Um, and I've accumulated some clothes, you know, over the 20 months that I've been here, but not that much. Um, so, yeah, I don't wear all that much of a variety, so. Okay, the next question was um, something that I think I missed uh, from a while ago, but the question was... What do Mongolians do on a typical daily basis? I don't know if it's surprising or not, but they do the same thing that we all do back in the States. Um, they go to work, you know, they take care of their kids, they go shopping, they hang out with their friends, you know, they have leisure activities, they have hobbies. Um, so it just depends on what they do and what their role is, you know. some It's a little different, I guess, from the States because... In my Somme, uh, where I live, there's a lot of families that have animals, and they, they herd these animals. So when I walk outside, I'll see wild, you know, I'll just see cows, um, I'll see sheep up on, the, up on the mountains, I'll see horses. So all day, these families are just taking care of these animals, because these animals are producing um, milk and meat uh, and so they're that's their job you know so like my family that i live with the husband and wife they they go to school every day and they're working nine to five or even later um you know teaching being the director of the school then they have the kids they come home cook dinner you know pass out <laughs> so it's the same thing um here as in the states just i guess a little different because they don't have you know, the amenities and, you know, all the luxuries that we have back home. So it's just the same stuff, just on maybe on a different level. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. Okay, the next question asked is, are there any myths in Mongolian culture? I am not 100% on that. I can't really answer that question. Um, I haven't heard any myths specifically. Um... But I've heard of, um, like, folk tales. Um, so if you want to... it's There are more stories that, you know, that has been passed down and passed down generation, you know, telling their children, stuff like that. Um, so Mongolians love their animals. Horses, um, you know, wolves and things like that. So it's... Mongolians are very connected to uh, animals here. So some examples are uh, the sly red fox, the swallow and the wasp, the good, the two good horses, and why the camel rolls in the ashes. So those are just four examples of some... Um, folk tales that they uh that they tell here um so i have a book it's kind of interesting and entertaining to read um so 
Yeah, that's uh, that's about it for the myths and folktales that I am aware of. Um, but I could be 100% wrong, and there could be some myths out there that I don't know about. So, sorry, I can't really answer your question on that. So the next question I asked was, who is my best friend in Mongolia? Um, so when myself and my other volunteers the, in our cohort, we came together. Um, gosh, I can't remember how many of us were here uh who came together but it's decreased um not too much but people have gone home for you know certain reasons but i guess i've developed a really close relationship with my friend julie um because she's right she's about 40 minutes away from me so she's really close uh and then i have uh, probably about three other friends that i have um hannah sally and um and Steven. So those four people have, they came to me, not came to me, they came with me here in Mongolia. So we've been, you know, friends since the beginning. And seeing as we're the only Americans here, you know, besides other people living in, in the capital who are just working, not with Peace Corps, you know, sometimes we build relationships with them, but we kind of rely on each other for that support while we're here. Um, so you kind of build really strong relationships with these people. So I would say those are probably my best friends here. Um, I mean, I'm friends with everyone else, but I would say I talk to them the most and I have more of a close knit, um, you know, intimate relationship with all of them. Um, so, yeah. The next question I asked was, um, is Miss Cohan my favorite teacher? Hmm. I guess this is depending on uh, how much money Miss Cohan wants to give me to give the uh, the best answer. So, Miss Cohan, I can uh, give you my bank account, and you can just direct um, direct deposit some some cash into my account. Um, but I would have to say, yes, Miss Cohan was my favorite teacher back in Cassell. Um, so, Miss Cohan, give me you know fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever you want, um, whatever you got. So. But no, no, Miss Cohan was great. I loved going to her class. Um, and as you can see, I'm still talking to her till this day. Um, man, when did I graduate Cassell? Uh, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, ever since graduation, we've, you know, we stayed in touch. That just shows how much, um, you know, she meant to me back in Cassell and continues to mean a lot to me. Um, so yeah, I would say Miss Cohan is, uh, was probably my favorite teacher. I'm not saying that I disliked any of my other teachers. Um, they were all fantastic. I enjoyed going to all their classes as well. Um, so please don't beat me up, everyone else. Uh, I don't. I didn't mean that in any way um, offending, but yeah, I'm digging myself in a hole here now. I'm going to stop. So the final question, um, <laughs> can I dab? And I honestly, I, ha I, ha I never heard of that uh, since or before. I got this question, so I had to Google it. Um, and whoever draw, whoever drew the picture of the of the person dabbing, that was really entertaining. Um, so can I dab? Um, why don't you just watch me dab, and you can you know say yes or no if I can, all right? So check it out. Watch it do it there. I move side to side. Throw my other hand. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. 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 So, I guess I can't dab. It was pretty, pretty bad. Um, so, I tried. I tried my best. Um, I want to see Miss Cohan dab. So, videotape her dabbing and then send it to me if you can, please. All right, well, that is uh, the finished us the end of my video um i will be creating another video for you all and i'll be getting to you next month and then i will be seeing you in april um so stay tuned and continue doing awesome work at cassell and i'll talk to you all soon later